Hello everybody and welcome to the ninth episode of OpenGL Engine slash Game Development Log. In this video I'll show the changes that I made to the engine this past week. First of all, this video got delayed a bit because I was reformatting a significant portion of the shaders. So that took two entire days because I had to go through about 10,000 lines of code. But yeah, this week I've been experimenting with the screen space reflections a bit and I just couldn't resist making a simple water effect to taste them a bit further. And I probably won't even need the water in the game, so this will be just a placeholder for doing some tests. But if I do end up using it, I will rework it so it will be much nicer than this. With the current implementation you'll probably be able to spot a few bugs throughout the video. If I just quickly describe the effect, because I'm using a deferred render, I can easily just use the color texture from the G-Buffer to give the water the refractive effect in combination with a texture coordinate distortion image, which with addition of time, at the end gives the effect of waviness pattern. I also made the water color changed a bit with the depth to make the effect a bit more interesting. And to get the final color, I just mixed the distorted refraction and reflection textures according to the Fresnel term. At the end, this just means that the water will seem more reflective, where the camera view is more parallel to the surface. If you paid close attention to the video so far, you might have noticed that the reflection effect is still drawing the objects from the previous frame, so even though I was able to rework the rendering pipeline from the previous week, there were really no improvements to the reflection effect um, besides the slight optimizations and increasing quality. Another thing you might have also noticed are the black bars visible at places where water intersects with the geometry, which are so easily visible to demonstrate the effect I will show later in the video. But before we go there, I've also made the light scattering effect fade out when the sun is near the edge of the screen, so there are no more sudden rays appearing when the sun barely enters the screen. This can be visible in this next clip. I personally think it looks a lot better with the fade out effect seen before, but if your opinion differs from mine you can tell me in the comments below. So with that out of the way let's get to the topic that took me the most time to make this week. I finally made the ambient occlusion effect efficient enough to be able to record the engine without any major lag. At this moment the effect is still not perfect but it's about 4 to 5 times faster than the old one and it still has some room for further optimizations. I never really talked about the previous version of this effect, but I think I showed it in some of the first episodes of the series. Well, I think it doesn't really matter because I kinda ruined it with this week's rendering pipeline rework. But I think this new effect looks a bit worse, but of course it's many times faster. When viewing the effect in a scene with actual colors, I think the difference between the versions is almost negligible. What I do however really like about this new version is that the effect scales really well with the size of the geometry and distance from the camera, whereas the old effect worked only for up to let's say 50 meters, then it became too noisy and jittery to be useful even when blurred, so needless to say this is a major improvement from the previous version. And as I said before there's also some room for visual and performance improvement as well. So with ambient occlusion and screen space reflections almost out of the way, it's almost time to start working on an actual game. So this means this video might be the last or the second to last episode in the engine development log for quite a while, because I was thinking of splitting these videos into two different series, engine development separated from the actual game development. Initially I thought that the engine content might interfere with the game content a bit too much, but seeing now I can make them completely separated, I was thinking of making a new series based only on game development. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. For now there might not be any development logs for the next few weeks because I'll be mostly working on core mechanics for the game. In the meantime I might upload some prerequisite tutorials for the particle system. Ok, so this brings us to the end of this video, if you liked the video like it. And if you'd like to see more videos in the development log series, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.